The Chicago Cubs just beat the Milwaukee Brewers back-to-back games at their own game. Let's go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Sam Olber. Please support the show by following on your preferred audio platform, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. We are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you, with you, with you on all things Cubs. This episode is brought to you by Bunches. Download the Bunches app today, and when you do, our friends at Bunches have featured the Locked On MLB Bunch in the Discover tab. You can also click the link in the description show notes to join the Locked On MLB Bunch community today. Welcome in. Happy Thursday to everybody watching out there. And I must start the show by just giving our baseball team a round of applause because this series win was just absolutely extraordinary. And later on in the show, I'm going to talk about the significance of it. But, you know, for for me, you know, th- it, was, it was weird on, on Wednesday because I did a lot of radio, so I had to come home. I had to watch the condensed game so I could analyze it properly. Uh, so let's talk about the game first individually, and then we'll talk about the series and just, t- to me, what the significance of that was. Cause I don't think it was just, Hey, we took two out of three from the team that we're chasing. Hey, we took two out of three from the Milwaukee Brewers who, who's the team that's been our way. I think it was just a little bit more than that. So let's get into the game. Uh, Kyle Hendricks started the game and, and now Kyle Hendricks in 16 of his 19 starts has allowed three runs or less for the Cubs. I tweeted this out, unpopular opinion. I, I mean no shade and I mean no disrespect to Javier Assad, but I think if, if we started a playoff series right now, Kyle Hendricks is getting the ball in game two for me, especially if it's against the Milwaukee Brewers because he owns them. And I, I think people with Hendricks, I, I just think people overreacted to his start against the Braves, and it was a blow-up start. It was a it was a marquee game on Friday, and people just saw that and saw how ugly it was. You know, it was seven runs in about five minutes, and just you know labeled Kyle Hendricks this this over the hill. You know, let's not run him out. I'm tired of watching Kyle Hendricks, and and he's just been awesome. Like when you look at his his analytics or you know, his peripherals, as, as they say, he he really isn't even that much far off from the Kyle Hendricks that was one of the best pitchers in baseball. His ground ball rates back up to where it was. His location has been really solid. The, the only thing is, is he just gets like a dramatically amount of less whiffs than he used to. But for the most part, Kyle Hendricks is back. And, and when he's out there now, I have switched my perspective of kind of biting my nails hoping he survives to expecting a very good outing and and I'm just so happy I you know and and by no means am I right all the time on this show if anything it's about 50 50 but I always thought that Kyle Hendricks was he was always my guy with the core and it just brings me a lot of joy that he's the last one standing and contributing to the next uh, very good Cubs team because I think that's right I think that's right anyways Kyle Hendricks was really good Cubs scored two runs in the first inning against Brandon Woodruff, and, and it was a little bit kind of fluky. It was a, uh, I think it was a leadoff walk to Talkman, uh, good at bat. Then Horner on a one-two pitch, almost kind of leaned into a pitch and just got skimmed on the elbow pad. And then Ian Happ came up, and he had very good numbers against Brandon Woodruff and lined a double. Dansby with a sack fly, two nothing Cubs, and that felt like I, I had a feeling Kyle was going to dominate. And I thought I felt really good at two nothing, and then the Cubs gave the Brewers a free run on a Kyle Hendricks throwing error, and it was two one. And the Cubs kind of had multiple opportunities to add on with Bellinger and, and Swanson, and they were not able to. Uh, 
and, and I saw a lot of people tweeting at me like, hey, you know, this offense isn't going to do anything against Cincinnati. And, hey, where's the offense? And it's like, guys, come on, man. Like, look who they're facing. You, you know, complain about the offense against Wade Miley. Fine. You know, Burns and Woodruff are Burns and Woodruff. Runs are hard to come by. Cincinnati doesn't have those guys. Cubs scored 20 runs in two games on Saturday and Sunday against the Pirates. Their offense is fine. Those guys are tough to hit, and and it was a grind. And then I thought Ross managed a really nice game. He went straight to Merriweather in the seventh inning, who who right now is the best reliever on the team right now. I mean, I know Alzali is the closer, but if, if you're telling me we got one inning right now, I mean, Merriweather – you know, we always felt very strongly about his stuff on this show and that it, it was it was always worth keeping him on the team because he throws 100 with a nasty slider. And, and you're witnessing now, you know, you always hear the hypothetical. Hey, this guy's got great stuff. If he ever puts it all together, he could be X, Y, and Z. Well, this is what you're seeing. He's putting it together. He got four outs, four straight outs. Nobody's even close to touching him right now. And then you had Carlos Santana up and Sal Freelick up with one out in the eighth inning. So Ross logically went to his, you know, uh, uh, lefty by design, Mark Leiter Jr. And Mark Leiter Jr. did not have his splitter on Wednesday afternoon. And even though Mike Mark Leiter Jr. has a fastball and a cutter and a curveball, he's really a one-pitch pitcher because all those pitches are doing are setting the hitter up for the inevitable splitter. And when he doesn't have command of his splitter, he is borderline unpitchable. He was able to get Santana out. Then he gave up a base hit to Freelick. And in that Freelick at bat, you could see he didn't have his splitter because he threw it to the backstop. I mean, he totally didn't have it. Then Freelick gets the free steal of second base, which was a shame. And then he pitches around Adamas and he gets Rowdy Telez. And Rowdy Telez is a guy that doesn't like to swing the bat very often. And he's not going to chase pitches. And actually, Leiter Jr. threw a couple decent splitters, uh, strike the ball splitters to, to Telez. But he didn't offer it him. He eventually walked him. And then Ross rightfully went to Adbert Ozlai to face Canna. And Adbert has a ton of tail on that two-seam fastball. And I didn't understand why Amaya was set up in the middle of the plate. Usually when, when Adbert's going to throw that fastball, the doesn't matter lefty or righty up, the catcher's going to set up in the lefty batter's box because it's going to start at the front hip of a lefty and then come back in the zone. So this started right down the middle and then came right back and nailed uh, Canna and it tied the game. Uh, credit Adbert for, for getting out of it, not letting it spiral. And then the Cubs added a run in the ninth on a uh, – a, a, what should have been a base hit by Morrell. They ruled it an error by Adamas. Another really good at bat from Talkman that drew a walk. Horner sacked, which I uh, sack bunted, which I was fine with, but you just, you never love happen in those spots. Um, he's just not the same hitter as he, as he is. And he got himself out on a 2 0 pitch that wasn't close. And then Cody Bellinger, you know, the MVP of this ball club, stepped up, lined a base hit off pi, uh, pi amps for an infield hit. And the Cubs were able to hold on in the ninth inning. And I, I just I, I can't express how awesome this series it win was because you know before the Cubs really got in the month of August I, I did a crossover on the Red Show and I think I even said it on our show I felt like if the Cubs are going to make the postseason they are going to have to win much more close games than they have been winning and you know they don't have to win all of them they don't have to win a majority of them but they got to win a handful of them. And what they've been doing lately is winning a ton of them. And not only are they winning a ton of them, but they just won back-to-back -back close games against the team that wins all the close games. Coming into this series, the Milwaukee Brewers were 27-11 and 11 in one-run games, and now they are 27-13. and 13. And I saw some stat that really – was flabbergasted. It just, it just was crazy. I believe now since June 1st or May 29th, so end of May, early June, the Cubs are now 17-6 and six in one-run affairs. They have completely flipped the script at what plagued them early in the season, winning those close ball games. And to, and to not only flip the script on that, but to do it against the team that this is what they do. They win on the margins. You give them an inch, they take a mile. To, to win that back-to-back, -back, I think it was, as a fan, as a fan, psychologically for me, it was really, really special. And it, it just it just shows me that, you know, they're very capable. You know, they're very capable. You know, Tyone, if you, you replace Tyone with Assad right now and you run out, 
uh, um, Steele, Hendricks, and Assad in a three-gamer, and you play those guys, I know they're dangerous. I know Burns, Woodruff, and Peralta are great, but I'm not scared. I'm not scared by any means. Uh, this team is more than capable of beating this team, and, and it was it was really great to see. Um, and, and you know everybody deserves credit for it. And you know I, I know that I, I know it's just one series, and I know there's still three games behind uh, Milwaukee, and the division probably still is a going to be a difficult task. But um, you know I just think that. It, it's it, it was a really it, it was it was bigger than your traditional two out of three series win, and to find a way to get it, I thought was huge. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk about more of the significance of this series and and where the Cubs are at, and 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 you know, is this the best you're feeling since when? Uh, but first, this episode is brought to you by Bunches. Okay, Locked On Cubs fans, I have to tell you about a new app called Bunches. Bunches is a new app built just for sports fans where you can chat about sports in real time. Go to the Apple App Store and download Bunches now. I'm telling you, you're going to love the conversations with other Cub fans. Bunches is the place where sports fans can chat. The Locked On MLB group chat is on Bunches. Go there now and connect with other baseball fans and chat about your favorite team and keep up with the latest MLB news. Chat about your team every day. Download the Bunches app today, and when you do, our friends at Bunches have featured the Lockdown MLB Bunch in the Discover tab. You can also click the link in the description on this episode. Try Bunches today. Cubbies are off on Thursday, so no serious XM game to listen to on Thursday, but on Friday, they have a doubleheader, which we will talk about on Thursday's show, or for Friday's show. Welcome back here on Locked On Cubs, and you know there's a lot there, there, there there's a lot of, of different directions we can go before we talk about the current playoff picture. And I want to know in the comments is, is this the best you felt about the Cubs since when? Since when? I think at this time in 2018. It was feeling pretty good. I, th- I think that was more of a September thing. So I guess that's probably the answer. But, you know, it- it's it's really crazy to me that the Cubs are in this spot because, you know, I don't want to get too big picturey. And this season has been such a roller coaster um, of emotions. But, but really, you know, and-, and-, and I really started to study this. It's been a roller coaster of, emo- of emotions, but really it was a, a- an-, an okay April. An okay June, a phenomenal July, a phenomenal August, and it was really just one terrible month that that started at the end of April and then went through May. I, I think that's really what it was. But to be here after July, late July of 2021, with with Anthony Rizzo, Kyle Schwarber, Javier Baez, Wilson Contreras, Chris Bryant all being off the team and in all in different areas and to be running out a team that has like a realistic chance to win, I don't know, 87, 88, 89 games is, is really awesome. And, you know, there's no bigger critic of David Ross, I think in the, in in the Cubs media than me, but you have to give him his credit because they're winning. Uh, and, And to me, Jed deserves a lot of it and the players deserve a lot of it. And, I'm just in a really good place with this team right now. I, I, th- this series for me, and and I, I know a lot of other people don't feel this way, but I have like a thing with the Brewers. Like I really don't like them. I respect them, and that's one of the reasons I really don't like them is they've just been a thorn in our side. And to see this team win back-to-back one-run games against them, low-scoring fashion, was was really big for me. It was really big for me. And look, I'm not coming out here saying they're going to win the World Series. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I do I do my best on this show. I do my best in life to always just be honest because like that's you're never going to regret anything if you're honest. I don't think they're going to win the World Series yet. Maybe I'll change my mind. But I think they're really good. I think they're really good. And they're doing this without Marcus Stroman. And we keep talking about, my dad came on here, I've been on here saying, hey, they don't have enough pitching. They don't have enough pitching. They don't have enough pitching. And I still probably believe that. 
but they just outpitched Burns, Woodruff, and the, one of the best bullpens in the league. And I think one of the reasons they are having such success in these close games is, is and I know it didn't work out today for Lighter, but they're 7 8 9 right now. Merriweather, Lighter, Ozilai, or depending on who's up, Lighter, Merriweather, Ozilai is as, le- is as legit as it gets right now. The Cubs have a true 7 8 9 in their bullpen. Uh, Steele is a legitimate ace. Kyle Hendricks is turning back the clock. Javier Assad is giving you something you couldn't imagine. And, and now you have Jordan Wicks. You know, we're going to see what he's got again on Friday. And, and the only guy that's really kind of struggling is Tyone. So I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I, I, I'm really happy with where the Cubs are at. And I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, losses are going to come, but, but this is really cool. You know, this is it's a really cool moment and you could see it. You could see people starting to to come in and pay attention to what they're doing. And, you know, people that I haven't talked to all season are asking me, hey, is this team real? And it, it feels very real what's happening with the Cubs right now. And, uh, you know, I am uh, I- I'm really happy about it. and Everybody deserves credit. Comment below, li- like the video and comment below and tell me, you know, when's the last time you felt this good? about the Chicago Cubs. It could be any time in a year. You could even say 2020 if you want. Um, but I always had this feeling after the 19 season that the, it just wasn't going to happen anymore with these guys. And so to have this new group and this new core and the farm system, it's just, it's very fresh and um, it's, it's, it's very, it's very cool to me. Uh, the, the, the question I have for you guys is, you know, would you bet on the Cubs to win the division right now? Because you know, that you can make any bet you want with FanDuel. And this episode of Locked On Cubs is brought to you by FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off. Remember those guys? Not a great preseason for the Bears, folks. A lot of injuries. Uh, the, the defense doesn't look good at all. My dad came on here, said seven wins. Ever since then, I haven't felt great. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You could probably bet $10 on the Bears to win the Super Bowl and win about $3 million. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Right now, the Chicago Bears over-under total is 7.5, and and they are plus 6,000 to win the Super Bowl as Justin Fields and company get ready for a new season. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. We are back here on Locked On Cubs. Go ahead and make that Bears bet and be ready to collect when it fails. But the Cubbies are not failing. The Cubbies are very much in the playoff picture. After Wednesday's game, they are just now three games behind the Milwaukee Brewers. Very much still a path to win that division. And the interesting thing about winning two out of three now is that the Cubs and Brewers are now tied in the regular season series. So the division very well might come to that last series up in Miller Park, and we'll see what happens. And we talked about it. It's also very possible, J.D. mentioned this uh, during the broadcast on Wednesday that is very possible that the Cubs and Brewers face off in the postseason. So uh, it'll be interesting. But the current playoff picture stands as this. The Cubs are in the second wildcard spot firmly. They are three games behind the Philadelphia Phillies for the first wildcard spot. And what's kind of cool is the Phillies and Brewers play each other this weekend. The Cubs are three behind both. So they're going to gain ground on somebody every single day. The Cubs are two games up on that second wild card spot from uh, with the San Francisco Giants and the Arizona Diamondbacks. So not only are they two games up, but they're theoretically two games up right now on a playoff spot. My number for me when I start to get really comfortable would probably be four, but you know, you're, you're going to be playing the guys that are behind you. So you got Reds, Giants, D-backs coming up. So if you could just find a way to just – hold serve, and then some, you're going to be in a really good spot. Uh, Where do the Reds stand? The Reds right now are one back of the Giants and D-backs and three back 
of the Chicago Cubs. On Friday's episode, when you're listening to that, by the way, the Cubs will probably already be playing. They have an early doubleheader. We're going to preview this Cubs Red series. It's a dangerous series because it reminds me very much of the Cubs series against the Reds in early August when the Cubs had to get a result in that series. They had to find a way to win three of four, and they did. That's where the Reds are at. The Reds cannot split this series. They need to get a result. If the Cubs go in and split that series, they probably feel good. But we will talk about that more for Friday's episode, and Friday's episode will be with a special guest. So stay tuned for that. Um, I hope everybody is enjoying the ride. I hope they're enjoying the weather cooling off just a tad as last week at this time I was melting and anybody out there, including my old roommate, Anthony, that says a hundred degree weather is comfortable. You know, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. Um, This is awesome guys. It's awesome. I can't say it enough. I feel like I'm saying it once a week, but uh, it's awesome to cover this. It's awesome to, to see the Cubs make this turnaround and I'll be the first to admit it. I didn't, I didn't think they were going to be this good. I didn't think when, when it got really ugly in early June, you know, and I had my famous episode right through in the white towel. I, I always thought they'd get hot again. I never thought that we would be sitting here as we approach Labor Day weekend. We approach Labor Day weekend, and the Chicago Cubs are firmly, as it stands right now, firmly in the playoffs. Pretty cool stuff. Shout out to the everydayers who are with us all five episodes throughout the week, and you can become an everydayer by checking us out each and every weekday. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash, smash the like button for the algorithm. We are also on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts and streaming on Sirius XM. I'm Sam Olber, and this has been another episode of Locked On Cubs.